Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. This is the Bloomberg Daybreak Europe podcast, available every morning on Apple, Spotify or wherever you listen. It's Wednesday, the 25th of September here in London. I'm Caroline Hepke. Coming up today, an economic adrenaline shot. China adds to its stimulus package as Asian shares continue to rise and traders bet on more Fed cuts. Iran's new president makes his entrance on the world stage with a stark warning to Israel. Plus, embracing an unpopular message, Keir Starmer says he will take tough long-term decisions as the business secretary dismisses warnings of a wealth exodus. Let's start with a roundup of our top stories. China's central bank has lowered the interest rate charged on its one-year policy loans while withdrawing liquidity via the lending facility. The move comes a day after Governor Pang Gong Sheng announced a stimulus package to revive the world's second largest economy. Chinese stocks have extended gains as investors continue to bet that the latest measures by the People's Bank of China will help drive a market turnaround and kick-start the country's sluggish economy. Meanwhile, traders are now marginally leaning towards a second straight 50 basis point rate cut at the Federal Reserve's next meeting in November. The move comes as US consumer confidence unexpectedly fell in September by the most in three years amid concerns about the labour market and the broader economic outlook in the US. Here is Dana Peterson, chief economist at the conference board. Much of it was because consumers are a little less optimistic when it comes to employment. Now, the overall uh, net from jobs hard to get versus jobs easy to get is still positive, but it's come down a lot. And even for expectations, consumers are a little bit concerned about whether or not they're going to have easy job prospects going forward. Dana Peterson says that whilst U.S. consumers still see a low chance of a recession in the next year, there has been a slight uptick in those believing the economy is already in a downturn. Iran's new president has warned that Israel's attacks on Lebanon cannot go unanswered after airstrikes on Hezbollah targets reportedly killed more than 500 people. Making his global debut before the UN General Assembly, President Masoud Pazeshkian did little to ease fears that all-out war in the Middle East may be close at hand. His words are spoken via a translator. We condemn Israeli crimes against humanity. It is imperative that the international community should immediately stop the violence and bring about a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and bring an end to the desperate barbarism of Israel in Lebanon before it engulfs the region and the world. The comments at the UN come as President Pazeshkian told Bloomberg News that plans are underway to discuss a revival of the nuclear deal with the West after a, quote, positive meeting with the French President Emmanuel Macron. The twin messages from the Iranian leader come as uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to press on with the aerial bombing campaign against Hezbollah. We will continue to hit Hezbollah. And I say to the people of Lebanon, our war is not with you. Our war is with Hezbollah. Nasrallah is leading you to the brink of the abyss. He causes your country to be in danger. Free yourself from the grip of Hezbollah. Benjamin Netanyahu speaking there also via a translator and referring to Hassan Nasrallah, the Lebanese cleric and the Secretary General of Hezbollah, who has pledged a heavy response after last week's pager and walkie-talkie explosions in Lebanon. A man who was found on Donald Trump's golf course with a loaded rifle has been charged with attempted assassination. Ryan Routh is also accused of possessing a firearm in furtherance of a violent crime and assaulting a federal officer, according to an indictment uh, statement from the US Justice Department. According to the department's filing, the suspect appears to have stalked the former president at his Florida resort for a month before being apprehended earlier this month. The case is assigned to Trump appointee, the US District Judge Aileen Cannon. Here in the UK, Keir Starmer says that he is ready to be unpopular and to make tough decisions. Speaking at the Labour Party's annual conference in Liverpool, the Prime Minister also promised a programme of national renewal. If we stick to the driving purpose behind everything we do, higher economic growth, so living standards rise in every community, 
our NHS facing the future, more opportunities for your children, then that light at the end of this tunnel, that Britain that belongs to you, we get there much more quickly. Keir Starmer there. Although the speech was light on policy details, Starmer did pledge housing for military veterans and a new Hillsborough law to force public bodies to cooperate with major disaster investigations. During the 54-minute address, he was briefly interrupted by a protester. He also mistakenly referred to hostages in Gaza as sausages before correcting himself. The speech came at a sensitive time for the party leader, who's under pressure to control the the narrative after weeks of negative headlines about donations and gifts accepted by senior ministers in government. And the UK's business secretary says that warnings of a wealth exodus from the country are too dramatic. Jonathan Reynolds told Bloomberg that his party is focused on promoting business interests. Look at what I said, look at what Rachel Reeves said yesterday about that total commitment to improving the business environment in the UK. But look at the big picture too. I mean, the political stability of the UK within the G7 has been transformed by the election result. You have a government committed to active policies to improve the business environment, even where it's politically difficult, like planning and building homes. That was Jonathan Reynolds there, speaking to Bloomberg Television at the Labour Party conference. His remarks come amidst criticism from the business community that tax rises in next month's budget could deter investment uh, if they emerge. Chancellor Rachel Reeves all but confirmed over the summer that she is planning revenue raises to close an estimated £22 billion in-year budget gap for the government. Speculation is mounting that she's looking at increasing capital gains, inheritance and property taxes. Uh, now, in a moment, we're going to get more on what is happening in the Middle East, the uh, latest as it comes to the uh, cross-border um, battle between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. Uh, also, we'll talk more about the impact of the Chinese stimulus on the markets. But I also thought that this was really interesting. Maybe you have time to read it this morning. It's Marion Somerset Webb. She also, always writes so beautifully and, of course, has a podcast for you to listen to. But she's done some in-depth reporting around passive versus versus active funds in the UK, um, particularly focused on um, UK investments. And she's broken down and look, it looked in more detail, actually, about the performance of passive versus active funds. She says that those labels um, don't, don't go far enough. You really have to investigate how actively the funds are being managed in order to understand whether active versus passive funds have done better. And she's actually saying that you know, active funds have actually done more uh, have done more for investors than you might uh, think if you initially look at the data. Uh, so, yeah, looking at uh, active share management, the, it's a very interesting piece. Challenging the passive versus active fund wisdom, as ever, ch challenging the um, the wisdom of of certain views in the markets. Marion Somerset Webb on the Bloomberg Terminal for you this morning. Now, China's central bank has cut uh, the interest rate charged on its one-year policy loans. This after a major economic adrenaline shot from Beijing on Tuesday that included rate cuts, more cash for banks, bigger incentives to buy homes, also plans to consider a stock stabilisation fund. The package has lifted Chinese stocks, it strengthened the yuan, and in Europe, companies reliant on China have also rallied strongly. Joining us now to discuss is Bloomberg's news editor, Jill Deeses. Jill, very good morning to you. Um, just let's assess then how big a boost the package from China has actually been. Good morning, Caroline. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, you just running through all of the different policies that we've heard from the central bank so far is already pretty head spinning. Uh, at this point, Bloomberg Economics suspects that uh, if we look at GDP growth through the end of the year, this probably will be a boost of about uh, 0.2 percentage points. Um, I mean, really, though, that's really just through the end of the year, maybe enough to ultimately lift GDP to help Beijing reach its economic growth target of around 5% this year. And really, it might be more that, um, you know, the economic impact of a lot of this is felt in 2025. I will point out, Caroline, that as of right now, I mean, we've heard quite a bit from the central bank on mm -hmm. various measures that they're putting together, rate cuts. Um, you know, obviously, we heard about that consideration for a stock stabilization fund. We got more, um, you know, on, on rate cuts today. Um, what still kind of has yet to be really determined here is whether we're going to see additional stimulus from other agencies, um, other se uh, sectors of government. I think the finance ministry in particular 
particular is one to really look out for. Is there going to be anything in the way of additional fiscal stimulus? I think all of that's still fairly to be determined, but at least um, you know uh, the the general consensus here is this is a, a big start. Um, can it be sustained? That's really the question here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, still an underlying question about you know whether the stimulus lasts, how long it might last for. Um, I also want to point, though, to the other major market story, which is the weaker than expected US consumer confidence data that we had out yesterday. And that has led to a big change in terms of um, rate cut bets for the Federal Reserve. A, a warning message on the US economy? Yeah, it's uh, really sort of crazy how stuff can change in, you know, just a week. I mean, last week we were debating 25 versus 50 BPS for that first cut. Now we're talking about maybe a second half point cut. Uh, it was a pretty troubling data just because um, nobody was really expecting, you know, it was pretty unexpected to see consumer confidence fall. I think, as you mentioned earlier in this program, a lot of that comes down to labor market concerns. I thought some of the, the really interesting pieces of that data set, uh, you know, it said that, um, you know, we saw the share of consumers saying that jobs for plentiful decline, um, you know, we're, we're again, uh, we're looking at smallest share there since March 2021. Um, we're also, you know, seeing a rising number of people saying jobs are really hard to get. So clearly the labor market is a major concern uh, among consumers in America. We know, obviously, that over the last several weeks, we've really, or I guess months rather, um, we've really seen, um, you know, the Fed's focus shift a lot um, more toward uh, it, to the mm. labor market concerns rather than inflation. Um, does the uh, flash warning signs for the economy. Still, I think we need additional sets of data, um, you know, over the next several weeks to see whether or not this is something that feels more entrenched. But it is a it is a troubling drop there. Yeah. Okay. So that from the conference conference board's gauge of consumer sentiment, the biggest drop since August 2021. Thank you so much, Jill, for being with me. Bloomberg's news editor, Jill Desis, on the latest in the markets. Let's also talk you through what's been happening in the Middle East. The Israeli military saying this morning it has intercepted a surface-to-surface missile from Lebanon after sirens were heard in Tel Aviv. Israel has carried out more airstrikes on Hezbollah in Lebanon. And you heard the Iranian president, Masoud Pazeshkian's warning at the UN yesterday in the news bulletin. Let's bring in Bloomberg's Middle East breaking news editor, Dana Craig. Good morning, Dana. What is the latest when it comes to the conflict and the exchange of fire? Good morning. Um, yes, uh, what you talked about just now that we saw a missile being intercepted uh, over Tel Aviv. That's the central, that's the commercial capital. Hezbollah hasn't yet um, claimed the attack, but it seems likely that it is from the group. Now, we saw yesterday also that Hezbollah was ramping up attacks against northern Israel, um, and then they claimed 16 separate attacks. They say it's against military targets, but what we've been seeing is that sirens had been sounding in northern Israel, including in civilian areas. On the other hand, Israel's targeting of Hezbollah um, Infrastructure has so far killed 500 people, at least 500 people, and wounded thousand, thousands other. This is, of course, in Lebanon, in a country that's still reeling from its worst economic crisis, um, trying to find the right funding, the infrastructure to house um, the currently the 26,000 who had left from South Lebanon and the Bekaa Valley where um, Israel's targets had been focused. Um, mm -hmm. And um, they have opened about 250 schools and government buildings to, have, to house those people. And of course, now this is turning into a humanitarian catastrophe for the country. Um, they barely have any funding to uh, finance uh, the, the housing or aid because most of these people are, are out of jobs. Mm. Several leaders at the UN General Assembly in the US criticised Israel on that point, including the Iranian president, Pazeshkian. Um, obviously, Iran backs Hezbollah and Hamas. What is Iran's position now? <laughs> So, yes, this was the Iran's president's debut right at a global stage. This is his first speech to um, the international community. And he warned that Israel's attacks on Lebanon cannot go unanswered. He, of, of course, criticized Israel's uh, uh, conduct of the war in Gaza. And that's been the same position by Iran. But what was interesting is what they said a few days ago. And what he told Bloomberg on the sidelines of the UN meeting um, is that they are ready to talk about the nuclear clear fi uh, file. And maybe, you know, the, the question is whether they are able to and whether any kind of de-escalation could open the doors for Iran in that in that sense. And of, of course, two days ago, um, we saw him saying that 
he is willing and ready to de-escalate tensions with, with Israel. Um, and that is, of course, remains to be seen, um, whether the U.S. and Iran can sit on the table again and discuss their nuclear file to ease sanctions and at mm. the same time ease tensions in the region. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Europe, your morning brief on the stories making news from London to Wall Street and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed every morning on Apple, Spotify and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning on London DAB Radio, the Bloomberg Business app and Bloomberg.com. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say, Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. I'm Caroline Hepke. And I'm Stephen Carroll. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day, right here on Bloomberg Daybreak Europe.